Looks like we got competition. I'll fix this, but I'm gonna need some help. Let's catch some multiverse men. Just run it by us next time you break the universe. Deal. Spider-Man. You're not Peter Parker. I am so confused right now. That spell that you botched started pulling in visitors from every universe. The multiverse is real? They all die fighting Spider-Man. There has to be another way! There isn't. They're a danger to our universe. This is all my fault. I can't save everyone. What's happening? They're starting to come through and I can't stop them. When you're thinking I'm about to do something that could break the universe. Oh, I know you! Run it by us. We need to send them back. You're not gonna take this away from me. You're flying out into the darkness to fight ghosts. What do you mean? They all die fighting Spider-Man. I'm sorry, kid. Yeah, me too. Don't. There has to be another way! There isn't. I underestimated you, Peter. Do I know you? Looks like we got competition. We started getting some visitors. In their universe, they all die fighting Spider-Man. I'm sorry, kid. Yeah, me too. Don't. There has to be another way! There isn't. What's happening? They're starting to come through. I can't stop them. Ever since I got bit by that spider, I've only had one week where my life has felt normal. That was when you found out. Peter? That spell that you botched, it started pulling in visitors from every universe. What's happening? They're starting to come through, and I can't stop them. Hello, Peter. Do I know you? You think your fancy new suit's gonna save you? Looks like we got competition. Welcome back everyone, this will be my new Spider-Man No Way Home trailer video and footage breakdown. There's a whole bunch of new TV spots with a ton of new scenes and Easter eggs. So if you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. This is just the beginning, there's going to be a bunch of really cool stuff happening. Hawkeye episodes also start this week and I'll be doing videos for all those episodes. But the first new scene is of Spider-Man and Dr. Octopus during the bridge fight. A lot of new bridge fight scenes. It begins when he starts thrashing Spider-Man around and it's right after he says, Hello, Peter, who responds, Do I know you? I don't even know who you are. Because remember, Tom Holland's MCU Spider-Man has never seen any version of Dr. Octopus before. Not an MCU Dr. Octopus and certainly not the Dr. Octopus from the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movie universe. And at this point, Dr. Octopus just assumes that he's fighting Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man. He still thinks that he's in his original universe. Because then he says, you think your fancy new suits are going to stop me, just talking about the Iron Spider suit, like he still thinks that it's Tobey Maguire underneath the mask. That's why later when Spider-Man takes the mask off, he says, wait a minute, you're not Peter Parker. Which Spider-Man reacts to by saying, I am so confused right now because he has no idea what's going on with the multiverse, the Spider-Verse of it all. You notice that Dr. Octopus still has the tentacle spike weapon from Spider-Man 2 because remember this is meant to be him from the second after he went down into the river at the end of Spider-Man 2 so it's as if no time has passed for him at all. Even though after he died time continued to pass in Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man universe so like Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man will look like he's much older when we see him in the movie but this Dr. Octopus looks the exact same age as when he went down in the river. It's all because of the way Spider-Man messes up Doctor Strange's spell and causes reality to warp in the multiverse. So you have different time periods in different parts of the multiverse mixing and matching with each other. So that's how you have both Green Goblin and Doctor Octopus who died at different points in the timeline of the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies now coexisting in the same time period of the MCU. But then right after he starts joking about his fancy new suit not being able to stop him, he throws Spider-Man, who responds by using the Iron Spider suit legs to rip his way through the metal. And Dr. Octopus kind of has this funny reply, chagrin, saying, looks like we have some competition talking to his arms, like they're competing to see who has the most arms. If it wasn't clear, for those of you that are asking, Dr. Octopus's arms are technically way stronger than the Iron Spider arms, like he could rip them apart. But I do like the theory here that Spider-Man is actually able to use the Iron Spider nanites in a really clever way to immobilize Dr. Octopus's arms. So when they start covering him, and it looks like Dr. Octopus has Iron Man built octopus arms, it might actually be Spider-Man using the Iron Spider nanites to immobilize his arms. Like what if Spider-Man is still technically in control of the nanites and what they're doing when this is happening? 
because they have to get Dr. Octopus in that basement prison of the Sanctum somehow. And while this is a cool Iron Man Easter egg reference here in all the trailers, in this new version of the Electro scene where he's yelling at Spider-Man, you're not going to take this away from me, just referencing Doctor Strange's orders to capture them and send them back to their original universes in time periods, effectively a death sentence. But you zoom in enhance and what do you see here? It's Iron Man's arc reactor from Iron Man 2, the one that he built using the new element that he created at the end of the movie. Now here's the thing, Iron Man built many more advanced arc reactors, the Avengers Endgame arc reactor for the Mark 85 armor being his final one, but the one from Iron Man 2 is still based on an Infinity Stone. Remember, he used Howard Stark's research on the Tesseract to perfect a new element. So the element is based on an Infinity Stone, so he's basically been powering himself with Infinity Stone energy this whole time since then in the MCU. It's a good way of explaining how Iron Man has been so OP when he doesn't have the same level of biological powers as people like Thor. But no idea how Electro manages to steal this or where he stole it from. Probably some Stark Industries museum exhibit or a lab somewhere. Post all your theories in the comments below about where you think that he got this arc reactor from. The reason why Electro would be using an arc reactor in the first place would just be to keep himself at maximum power output for much longer. Then there's more new footage of Spider-Man and Dr. Octopus quipping about being super confused and when they're in the sanctum later, because it seems like Dr. Octopus is actually the one to really explain everything to him after they get in the prison beneath the sanctum. Like at a certain point, Dr. Strange yells at him about them getting visitors from other universes, things bleeding over, but it sounds like he doesn't really understand what's happening until he crosses paths with Dr. Octopus. Also really funny extra detail you may have noticed inside the basement where they're keeping Dr. Octopus. You notice all around the basement here, there's just tons of junk that it seems like Doctor Strange and Wong are storing here in the Sanctum. There's even a fully complete model train set all set up in the background. I'm going to go ahead and guess and say that that's Wong's model train set. After the Wong vs. Abomination fight scene, his character got like 10 times more interesting. Like, is he gambling for money? Does he need more sandwich money? Is that why he's doing this? Now we also know that he loves to drink and do karaoke. There's just so many new questions that we have about Wong now. And right now in Spider-Man No Way Home, it looks like he's packing up to head to warmer climate, like he's going to Kamartage to just hang out because of what's happening in the Sanctum with snow covering everything. Which is also still a huge unanswered question, like what is going on in the Sanctum when this is all happening? I know there are all kinds of crazy theories about this not being the real Doctor Strange, like somebody pretending to be Doctor Strange. But then we also get a brand new funny scene with J. Jonah Jameson where he calls the lizard a dinosaur. Like, is that a dinosaur? The clip is kind of janky and potato quality, but the scenes are really funny. Just Peter, leave a message. Yeah, Peter, this is happy. Who are those guys, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Peter, you want to get me What's going on? Call me back. Multiverse is real. Dinosaur? The scene of Happy there yelling at Peter's answering machine is just a callback to Spider-Man Homecoming when they just spent all that time trying to call each other and Happy just being really pissed off about having to take time to talk to Spider-Man on the phone because he felt like it was a glorified babysitter. Oh, how times have changed. This time he's yelling at him about the Sinister Six visitors as Doctor Strange calls them. We started getting some visitors. There's another new scene of MJ and Spider-Man while they're still in the basement of the Sanctum going full Scooby-Doo where she starts yelling at him for not telling her about Doctor Strange's spell. Like she says, next time you're thinking about doing something that's going to break the universe, maybe you run it by us first. So what that tells us is that the way Spider-Man messes with Doctor Strange's spell, causing all this havoc, successfully allows MJ and Ned Lees to remember him and their time together. Otherwise, the movie would stop short after the spell, like he'd have to run around and then re-explain his entire backstory to MJ and Ned Lees so that they could do the Scooby-Doo stuff. There's a brand new scene of Spider-Man versus the Sandman. He's got him with his giant hand here, and there's another new Sandman scene of him just reaching out to the frame here. For those of you asking what happened to him, because Doctor Strange and Doctor Octopus both imply that all the villains died during fights with Spider-Man in their original universes, but during Spider-Man 3, a lot of you remember the last time we saw Sandman, he was very much alive at the end of that movie. I believe during Spider-Man No Way Home, they'll just cover the rest of those Sinister Six characters' storylines. In Sandman, for instance, probably died in some later fight with Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man after the events of Spider-Man 3. The other big new scene in here is a longer version of the train fight scene between Spider-Man and Doctor Strange after he's yoinked Doctor Strange's magic box and they've entered what looks like the mirror dimension, where everything in New York City looks like it's folded in on itself. 
is a slightly different version of what they did during the first Doctor Strange movie when they were running around the warped New York City landscape. And it's basically Doctor Strange using the same trick against Spider-Man that Kaecilius was using against Doctor Strange, trying to trap him to keep him from running away because Doctor Strange is trying to trap Spider-Man to get the box back. There's also another scene with a much better look at the New York City Post newspaper at the beginning of the trailer about his spider minions. You can clearly see they parodied MJ and Ned Leeds like he's manipulating them as if they are literally his minions. Probably because everybody in New York City just sees them walking around with Peter all the time. The reason why it's not a Daily Bugle newspaper is because in the MCU, the Daily Bugle in present day isn't a newspaper anymore. It's evolved into this big TV online news network. So there's no print publishing arm of the Daily Bugle anymore. It's all video, blogs, radio, podcasts. Like you can see the Daily Bugle news trucks around J. Jonah Jameson in all these scenes here outside. But if you spotted any other Easter eggs in this new footage that I didn't talk about during the video, just write them below in the comments. We'll get more trailers as we get closer to the movie coming out. So we'll get some more clues about what's going on with the Spider-Verse of it all. At the rate they're going, with any luck, we'll also see some more weird scenes where it looks like they're trying to manipulate footage to remove other versions of Spider-Man, like that weird Andrew Garfield lizard scene. He moves right there! Coincidence? I think not! Big reminder too, this week, Hawkeye Episode 1 and Episode 2 are releasing on Wednesday, so my videos for that will post that day. I'll be doing videos for all the episodes. Make sure you have alerts enabled for my channel so you don't miss that. And everyone, click here for my full Spider-Man No Way Home trailer video and that weird Andrew Garfield scene. And click here for my Venom Let There Be Carnage alternate post credit scene, deleted scenes, and alternate ending. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.